Am I fireproof? No. But with our understanding of genetics, is it possible to induce mutations in humans to give them superpowers? Like could I burn myself to become fireproof? That was the question that Joshua and his wife Esther Lederberg were trying to figure out in the 1950s. See, not much was known about mutations back then, and the question on everyone's mind was how do mutations happen? There were two big ideas, directed mutation and pre-adaptation. Directed mutation was the idea that organisms mutate in response to environmental change. If you set me on fire, I'll mutate to become fireproof. Pre-adaptation, on the other hand, is the idea that organisms randomly acquire mutations. That is, mutations are stochastic or random, but you don't notice them unless the environment changes. In other words, I'm already fireproof, but you can't tell unless you set me on fire. By the way, pre-adaptation is totally right. Now, it's important to note, the Lederbergs didn't invent pre-adaptation. In fact, these scientists had already found tons of evidence for it. But it was Josh and Esther who really put the nail in the coffin by developing the replica plating technique. Before explaining the letterbugs to experiments, it's important to understand what replica plating is first and why it was such a breakthrough in experimental design. See, you used to have to move bacteria colonies from one plate to another, one by one, but this took way too long. So naturally, Joshua and Esther had to invent velvet replica plating so all the colonies on a plate could be moved simultaneously. First, a sterile velvet sheet is wrapped around a stamping block and secured with a rubber band. Then your initial plate can be stamped onto the velvet, and because of the velvet's furry surface, the bacteria colonies are absorbed into the fabric. Voila! You've essentially made a stamp of that plate. Now you can press other plates onto this stamp, and the colonies would be in the same place. But how did the Lederbergs use this technique to find out how mutations happened? Well, instead of fire resistance, they looked at antibiotic and phage resistance in E. coli through two experiments, a direct selection and an indirect selection experiment. Antibiotics and bacteriophages are both very good at killing E. coli, so resistance against them is basically like a bacterial superpower. In the first experiment, E. coli was directly exposed to an antibiotic and bacteriophage to select for mutants. First, different E. coli colonies were cultured in a broth and plated on a parent agar plate. Then, replica plating was used to copy this parent plate onto selective media. Selective media is basically any growth medium which isolates a specific trait. In this case, agar plates sprinkled with streptomycin, an antibiotic, and agar plates coated with T1 bacteriophage were used. So the colonies which survived must have been streptomycin or T1 resistant. Now imagine we replicated the parent plate onto selective media multiple times. What would we see? If mutations were directed, then we should expect to see the distribution of surviving colonies to be completely random. That is, which colonies survive and how many colonies survive from trial to trial should be different. This is because each colony would be equally likely to mutate and become resistant. Instead, what the letterbugs saw was that all the selective media plates looked identical. This provided evidence for pre-adaptation, because it suggested all the surviving colonies must have been resistant since the start, but you could only tell once selective pressure was added. But it gets even better, and this is the exciting part that you're probably going to be learning and doing in the lab. Velvet replica plating could do something that couldn't be done before, isolate the parent colonies. Why was this revolutionary? Well remember, the parent colonies haven't touched streptomycin or T1. So if we could select for resistance using the parents, then that would show that resistance existed from the start, and would be very strong evidence for pre-adaptation. Looking at where the surviving colonies are on the selective media, we can first look back at the initial agar plate and find the survivor's parents. We could then culture these parent colonies in a new broth, plate them onto another plain agar plate, and velvet replicate onto selective media. If pre-adaptation was true, then repeating this indirect selection process should concentrate more resistant colonies in the new E. coli broth. And what did they find? By the fourth repeat, Josh and Esther found that every single colony was resistant to the selective media they were plated on. In other words, they could select for antibiotic and phage resistance in the E. coli without ever exposing the parent colonies to streptomycin or T1. This showed that mutations must have existed from the start and are therefore pre-adaptive. So let's conclude. Why was this paper so significant? Well first, it was a very direct demonstration of pre-adaptation and helped answer the question of how mutations happen. But equally important, the Lederbergs developed a cheap and accessible technique 
that could quickly and accurately transfer a whole plate's worth of bacteria colonies onto another plate. And it is for these reasons that it has become a staple in labs all over the world to study things like bacteriophage therapy, stress responses, and insulin production. So although we can't induce superpowers, at least we have a neat way to study bacteria.